Hi, Tyler Interfidelity here at the Consumer Electronics Show 2017. I'm in the Dirac booth. Is that the way you say it? Dirac yeah, booth? Absolutely. Dirac is a company that does all sorts of signal processing and room correction and various other things. And they're currently working on some headphone stuff that I found quite interesting. And Matthias Johnson, uh, Johansson is going to uh, give us a little tour of what you're doing. Absolutely. So we got a pair of Sennheiser HD650 here actually that we've modified as you can see from the wires here we have a head tracker at the top here uh, which allows you of course then to detect you know where my head is when I'm listening like this and I can move my head in any way I like and it will keep you know track of where I am mm. and what do we do with that information well you know our idea was we could create a virtually perfect virtual hi-fi experience over headphones and get rid of room problems and so on that you have in a real hi-fi system so that actually the virtual hi-fi experience can be better than a real two-channel setup with speakers and at the same time we could maybe solve some of the issues related to headphone listening with regards to the stereo image so this is our attempt to do that so we're we've come up with a new approach uh, to HRTFs, head related transfer functions. I don't know how familiar everybody is with head related transfer functions. Interfidelity readers are going to um, have quite a good grip. I would guess. So. I talk about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that we realized was that most of the HRTF databases that exist today, they assume that the body and the head move in tandem like this. Right. But in reality, when I'm listening to you right now, I'm moving my head a little bit and doing like this. So I'm moving my head in isolation to the right. body. So we had, you know, we had to build a new measurement system, in essence, because that, those little movements affect you know, how the head-related transfer function yeah. actually looks like. Here, there's yeah. a bounce off my shoulder here. When I do right. like this and this, that's a pronounced effect. Right. There's a notch that moves about as I do like this, actually, yeah. as it yeah. turns out. So we devised a listening system or a measurement system to, do, to measure new HRTFs using this head tracker, ear, uh, microphones in the ears, having one fixed source, having people, you know, go through these motions right, right. to create a new database that's right. also uh, applicable and it works for, for universal use. It's not so dependent on individual cues as it turns out because we try to model the things that are common to all people because we wanted something that could work actually for a big part of the population. Yeah, sure enough, weird. you know, individualization as is widely recognized is important in order to get, you know, 100% performance, right. but we think if we get to 95%, we're pretty well off. And we think that one part of this is the dynamic HRTFs. So we did that to you know, get proper localization, quite accurate localization. We think it's more accurate than, than other approaches, and it's up to everybody to judge, of course. Uh, the other thing we did, in order to have a virtual room, of course we need the room acoustics as well. Right. And room acoustics normally destroy sound. But, in the, uh, but on the other hand, it also creates this sense of space right. and helps us to perceive position and localization. So in one sense we need it, we just don't need too much of it, right. we need just the right amount. So, and of course we have worked with room correction for many years. So we learned a little bit about how to control the room acoustics and what aspects are good and what aspects are bad. So we worked on creating a set of early reflections that help us perceive where is the source, but not so much that they really deteriorate the sound. Because you typically tend to get calm filtering effects right. from these early reflections, right. and they mess up the sound stage. Right. So what we did here in this proof of concept, because this is just a proof of concept, this is the first version we're showing here at CES actually. <clears throat> we try to create a critical listening environment. We simulate two loudspeakers, studio monitors actually, and a well-treated uh, studio, small studio, and then have people like you here come in and listen to that and be able to compare to a real setup in this room, which is by no means perfect, and you're able to, you know, change your positioning of your head and hear how the sound supposedly then stays the same. Mm -hmm. So it's something we see as a, um, you know, you could have a personal home theater setup, for example and you could use it in a headphone amp or as an, or, or in the headphone with, with a head tracker on and a Bluetooth chip. All of this can be inputted in, 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 uh, in the headphone actually. So hmm. this is our first application yeah. of uh, VR technology for, for headphones actually right. from Dirac. 
and uh, <coughs> stepping stone we're gonna go uh, develop it further we're going to do new things as well in this whole field we think it's an exciting field because it combines our knowledge of room acoustics and speaker and room treatments with our knowledge of optimization of headphones as well right. I would think in the end it could be something that's pretty interesting to audiophiles that want you know the best possible uh, sound reproduction both image wise and you know quality wise <coughs> over headphones right well I have to say it was uh, when I first sat down and and listened um, I immediately have to take the headphones off to see if the speakers were on or if the computer speakers were on or if the headphone, you know. So it, it, it definitely was um, a, a, a pretty good out of your out of head experience, at, at least very initially. Uh, once I got used to it and, and put it on and moved my head around, I did find that it tended to rise a little bit in the middle, which is very common. There is some... Uh, 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 compensation for elevation and as I lifted my head up the the image tended to kind of uh, break apart a little bit and then and not quite um, remain focused when it was in front of me but I have to tell you there's I've, I've virtually never heard anything that could do a really good job of direct frontal localization unless there was individualized HRTF so um, as a proof of concept I thought it was quite good I mean it was yep. very a very um, a good attempt and I, and I look forward to your continued developments it's a very very hard problem it is it is and it, that's what's exciting about it though I mean it's, yeah. it's fun you know and, and you know the, the points you raised here are points we know it ourselves yeah we have a few issues still to deal with but we're at the point where we, now we can show it up because it's good enough it yeah means, you know what's out there and we think we want to go one step at a time and so on get gather some feedback from right. guys like you and others right and see you know in the end looking at product rollout maybe in a half year or so yeah and we're gonna be uh, i think Right at where we want well, to be. well, good luck with that. You're in the <laughs> midst. So you're much. in the. You're in the midst of a very rapidly changing, very complex task. Indeed. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I guess I guess the big problems that I see are you know how do you get it incorporated into all the various types of mediums and devices and and so on and so forth. It's going to be a, a very very dynamic and fast moving environment so uh, so good luck with that Matthias. thanks so much yes have a good day yeah. and we'll see you guys at the next booth